Brother Kenneth, come forward and lead us in the songs of praises this evening. Some of the songs are new, but we all join in and give our heartfelt praises to God. We are on the series on Bible Christians, and in fact, right now, in the middle of March, we are halfway through seven before, seven more after. And tonight, we are looking at Simon the Zealot. If someone asks you, who is Simon the Zealot? And if you are not able to give any answer, you are absolutely right. Because the Bible do not tell us anything about this apostle, as in the case of some other apostles as well. But in the remaining time that we have, we want to draw some lessons from this apostle. There are two apostles in the Bible with the name Simon. We are familiar with the first Simon, Simon Peter. Very few can tell you anything about Simon the Zealot. In fact, if you search the scriptures, you don't find any additional information. And so tonight, we look at this apostle of Jesus. There are a few verses in the Bible that refers to him. The first is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and then Simon the Zealot. The next verse that mentions Simon the Zealot is in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. And again, he is part of the list of the apostles together with Simon Peter. The third mention is by the author Luke, chapter 6, verse 13, another listing of the apostles, first Simon Peter, and then Simon the Zealot. After that, we read one more mention of Simon the Zealot, and it is in X. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, when they return from Jerusalem and in the upper room, there was Simon Peter and there was Simon the Zealot, and also there were others who with one accord, continue steadfastly in prayer and supplication along with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother, who is a zealot. And here you see one of the paintings of Simon the zealot with a fierce-looking Sword, something kind of dramatic. And so, a zealot is a first century political movement who sought to overthrow the occupying Romans. And they created so much trouble to the Romans that the Romans crucified any zealot. 
that they can find, preserving their harshest punishment for the zealots. According to Jewish historian Josephus, there are three or four main groups of the Jews. Three we are quite familiar with. One is the Pharisees, another is the Sadducees, and there is this monistic group called the Essenes, who kind of move themselves away from society. They stay together, and from morning to night, they involve themselves in the study of the Word of God. If you visit the Bible lands, and if the tour takes you to the Red Sea, they will bring you to some remains of the communes of the essence. And the guide will explain how this monistic group live their life away from society, devoting themselves only to the word of God. But Josephus also mentioned that there is a fourth group that is called the zealots. And this paper can be compared to the modern day suicide bombers. They just want to destroy the Romans and they will do it every way they can. And the Romans, of course, will not tolerate them in any way. Now, moving from Zealot, let's focus on Simon. Two Simons among the apostles. Some people would like to suggest that Simon was not part of the Zealots, but he was simply zealous for the gospel. Sounds very unlikely, but we find when Jesus was cleansing the temple, chasing the money changers out, his disciples recall Psalms 69 and verse 10, that zeal for your house will consume me. Another person beside Jesus that we would associate with being very zealous is, of course, the Apostle Paul. He admits in Acts chapter 22 that I am indeed a Jew. And he went on to say, instructed according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers. Paul was a Pharisee, and Pharisees mean business when it comes to the law. Being zealous for God, even as you all are this day. Let's look at five lessons that we can learn from Simon, the zealot. First, we find in the apostles of Jesus, there is diversity. There were a number of fishermen, but they were 
also a zealot, a man who lightly is a fighter and someone that is prone to destroy anyone that do not agree with him. Then there is Matthew, a tax collector working for the Romans. Simon hating the Romans. Matthew working for the Romans. Both of them find a common ground among the disciples of Jesus. How Jesus brought these two opposing forces together. Now, they are part of the mission of Jesus. No longer serving Rome, no longer fighting against Rome. Secondly, I need to emphasize that zeal is indeed a good thing. Think about your life. Do you have something that sparks joy when you wake up in the morning? I know some of you have grandchildren and you post them all over Facebook because they are precious. We need to have passion, to be zealous about things of this life. Like many of the lesser known apostles, most of the life of Simon the Zealot remains a mystery. We can read other sources and gain some information, but they are not inspired, and sometimes they are contradiction about who Simon the Zealot is, what he is doing, where he went as an apostle, and even how he died. So many stories, but they are not from the Bible. No other details about Simon the Zealot, who his friends are, what he did, and what he said. But what we know is that he was an apostle of Jesus. And it is no joke to be an apostle of Jesus. Jesus did not randomly go to the street and call people, follow me. He selected just 12. And he tells them that if you follow me, the foxes even have shelters. But when you follow the Son of Man, there is nothing there for you. But they willingly left their trade. Matthew earning lots of money as a tax collector. And we find Peter James and John having a good fisherman trade, but they left all. And the Bible account says they left immediately because it was such an opportunity. It's like someone who comes to us and offers us a job of a lifetime. And we don't have to say, let me think about it. 
which is done because this is what we want all our life. And so Simon the Zealot was an apostle. Takes a lot to be an apostle. And he was willing to become one of the twelve. Wondering, going with Jesus, facing opposition, but staying together as a group. Jesus must have seen in Simon a potential to spread the gospel, not as a zealot forcing people through physical effort, but through the power of love. And Simon had three years to walk with Jesus, to experience and to learn from the Master. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2, the Apostle Paul wrote about the zeal of the Christians in Macedonia, which is a part of Greece, that you have prepared for a whole year. And because of your zeal, you have stirred up many and encourage them in the faith. So zeal is commendable. In contrast, force will fail. How do you win your parents to Christ? Can you force them? But they can see your zeal. And when we started the Chinese congregation, many people think that it was a hopeless case because our parents would never come to the Lord. But when our members reached out to our parents, already half the battle is won because our parents knew how much our faith means to us and have seen our zeal. For me, it was quite an easy matter for me to invite my parents to church. And for many of our members, it is the same. They will come because of zeal, but not because of force. The zealot wanted to free Israel from Roman rule, and they do it by force. And they created a lot of unpleasant situation for the Romans at that time. The last straw came when the Romans enforced imperial worship. And so, finally, all the Jews have a common cause. Because if you will talk to a Jew, the Lord, our God, is one God. And Jews will not worship anything else under the pain of death. And so when Romans try to force the Jews to worship Caesar, the zealots find a rallying point and together they overthrow the Roman government in Palestine in around 66 AD. But force can only do so much. And four years later, the Romans came back. And they came back with 
greater force and they level out the entire Palestine. The temple itself was demolished and they took back Palestine and they became even more cruel and strict in taking over the area of Jerusalem. Jesus said in John chapter 18 that my kingdom is not of the world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus is not a member of the zealot because he came, but he did not take over by force. In fact, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 that the thing that will not fail is love. Not force, but love will not fail. And so, we learn from Simon the Zealot that if any transformation is going to take place, it is to be done by the gospel. For three years, Simon the Zealot followed Jesus as, the, as an apostle. And you must be wondering what is going on in his head because he has to unlearn so many things and to lay down his arms and start on the mission of love. And so being close to Jesus, he learned that Jesus did not come to fight but to teach and to win souls and to draw people to him, not by force, but by love. Jesus engaged those opposed to him with the gospel. And even when he was crucified on the cross, he did not fight back and continue to utter words of forgiveness. We have a song that we sometimes sing that Jesus could have called 10,000 angels to deliver him. And if we were in the place of Jesus, we probably would call 10,000 angels. But Jesus wants us to be transformed by the gospel. His mission is not political. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21, Jesus says, Therefore, render to Caesar the thing that are Caesar's, and to God the thing that are God's. And during his three years with Jesus, Simon the Zealot matured. They now is hums, pick up the gospel, and went as far as Persia to share the gospel of Jesus. One of the call of Jesus to apostleship is actually to come and die. Deny yourself. Carry the cross just as I have to do it. And in fact, from all the records that we can find, all 12 apostles of Jesus were crucified or killed for their faith except one. 
And that person is John the Apostle, which will be our last lesson in this series. The only apostle that died a natural death. Everyone was tortured, crucified, or killed, dying for Christ. But there are so many accounts of Simon the Zealot's death that we do not know which one to believe. One says that he was martyred. Another says that he was crucified. And the third source supports his crucifixion, but took him from Samaria all the way to Britain. And then there are some who claim that he was saw into half. Choose a pick. Which one do you want? If we have our brothers who say, no, thank you. They are all not for me. But you see, Simon's faith, like the rest of the apostles, was so strong that they are willing to die for Jesus. The reason why I believe this is so, because they have seen Jesus. They have learned from Jesus. They have seen him crucified and placed in the tomb. But they have also seen him resurrected and alive after three days. Let me ask you a question. If you know of someone who died and resurrected, and you're following that person, would you be afraid of a sword? Would you be afraid to die for him? Certainly not the apostles. And some of the paintings of the apostles and the way they died perhaps signify the pain that they endure. Jesus says in John 15, 13, that greater love has no one than this, that someone they now is like for his friends. And some of the paintings of Simon the Zealot have a saw in his hands, indicating that he was sawn into half. And so tonight, as we look at this apostle, we need to understand where you are listed is important. Do you want to be a classmate of Lee Kuan Yew? Or do you want to be listed among those that are infamous and have been in prison perhaps. So think carefully. Simon devoted his life to following Jesus. Tradition tells us that he became a missionary going as far as Persia. He is now preaching the gospel. And he has learned that this is a message of peace. Because false have no place in Christianity. Your faith, your devotion, your passion, nobody can force you. You have to Decide on your own. Jesus' call is whosoever 
wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross. He must follow me. We can encourage, but the Christian must decide on his own. Like Simon the Zealot, 